Lawmakers in Washington passed massive tax cuts and changes in late 2017. Now Iowa lawmakers are attempting a similar approach, raising questions about deficits and economic growth. We sit down to talk taxes and spending with Senator Charles Schneider and Bill Dotzler on this edition of Iowa Press. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, the Associated General Contractors of Iowa, the public's partner in building Iowa's highway, bridge, and municipal utility infrastructure. I'm a dad. I am a mom. I'm a kid. I'm a kid at heart. I'm a banker. I'm an Iowa banker. No matter who you are, there is an Iowa banker who is ready to help you get where you want to go. Iowa Bankers, allowing you to discover the genuine difference of Iowa banks. For decades, Iowa Press has brought you politicians and newsmakers from across Iowa and beyond. Now celebrating more than 40 years of broadcast excellence on statewide Iowa Public Television. This is the Friday, February 23 edition of Iowa Press. Here is David Yepsen. One of the original principles of Republican tax policy was deficit neutrality, meaning any tax cuts would be met with compensating revenue increases or spending cuts. Republicans in Washington bucked that philosophy to the tune of more than a trillion dollars in potential deficit impacts in a late 2017 tax cut vote. Now Republicans in Iowa have proposed historic tax cuts and changes with estimates exceeding a billion dollars in annual lost state revenue or savings to taxpayers, depending on your point of view. So we've gathered a pair of lawmakers to sort through it all. Republican Senator Charles Schneider of West Des Moines chairs the Senate Appropriations Committee, and Democratic Senator Bill Dotzler of Waterloo serves on the Senate's Tax Writing Ways and Means Committee. Gentlemen, welcome back to Iowa Press. Thank it's you. Good, to, good to have you with us. Thanks for having us. Great to be here. Across the table, Aaron Murphy is Des Moines Bureau Chief for Lee Enterprises, and Kay Henderson is News Director at Radio Iowa. Gentlemen, I'd like to open our conversation today with the, just a Simple question, and Senator Schneider, I'll start with you. What does this Senate tax bill do? It's a huge bill. Uh, what's all in it? What are the high points in it? Well, basically, to state it simply, what this tax plan does is it charts a course to move us from one of the worst tax climates in the United States to one of the best, most attractive. Our tax code over the last several years has become a hodgepodge of tax deductions, credits, and exemptions that have largely been put in place to mask high tax rates. We have the fifth highest personal income tax rate in the U.S. We have the highest corporate income tax rate in the U.S. And that makes us uncompetitive. So what we're trying to do is lower rates, make, make our tax code simpler by uh, fully coupling with the federal tax changes that have been made. That will result in less time and paperwork for families and small businesses to file their taxes. And we level the playing field. We modernize our sales tax code. Uh, we sunset tax credits, which we won't need anymore because we have more competitive rates. So to sum it up, what we're trying to do is bring our tax code in the 21st century and make us more competitive. Senator Donson, what's the Democratic view of what the Republicans well, are trying to do? <clears throat> I think, first of all, uh, Senator Schneider didn't tell the whole story when it, when it comes to our tax structure because we have something called federal deductibility that lowers that apparent rate. But the real question is, I think we're sitting on a, a billion dollar bill that's really a true mystery to what's all in it and how it's gonna work. And so we really think that we ought to spend more time to look at this, look at the ramifications and move through the process. And may I add that uh, uh, Senate or House Republicans in their recent newsletter said that they had no idea or no uh, cooperation with the Senate on this bill, and it would take them several days for them to even figure out what was in it. And so we really think we ought to spend more time and slow the process down and really truly understand what a billion dollar tax uh, bill would do to Iowa. Well, we'll get into the weeds now. Okay. Uh, Senator Snyder, the governor unveiled a plan last week which cut individual rates by 23 percent. You folks cut it by 30 percent. Hers was a six-year phase in. Yours is immediate. Um, and you include all sorts of other things that the governor didn't do. What was wrong with her plan? 
There's nothing wrong with her plan. Uh, there are different ideas. I think it's healthy to have different perspectives on the same issue. And the same issue we're trying to address is an uncompetitive tax system. We rank 40th out of the 50 states, according to the Tax Foundation. Uh, Senator Dotsler mentioned federal deductibility. Nobody knows what that is. We're one of two states, I believe, that still has this archaic uh, deduction. The Wall Street Journal ran an editorial in December that listed the top 10 or 15 or 20 different uh, states with their tax rates. They didn't even have an asterisk next to our rate, which was there at number five. So some, some organizations, when they list different tax rates, don't even pay attention to federal deductibility or try to understand it. Well, your, your bill cuts corporate rates. It, um, it changes the taxes on financial institutions in this state. It does a whole host of things. Um, have you promised the moon here and made it more difficult for people like Governor Reynolds to seek re-election when you promised the moon knowing you can't deliver? What we've done is we've introduced our own plan to make our tax system more competitive. The governor has introduced hers. Uh, we still have to work with the House to put something together. We expect that we will have to negotiate and compromise. That's a part of the process. So we're looking forward to having that conversation and uh, I hope that we can send something over to the House soon so that we can continue those conversations. Senator Dotzler, could you support the governor's plan which phases things in over a six year period and well, has economic mm -hmm. triggers that don't, that mean that the tax cuts don't go into effect if the state's financial position worsens? Well, that's, that sounds a lot better and I would have to say that uh, I believe Democrats really do believe that we need to get rid of uh, uh, the federal deductibility so we have more transparency in in our tax code and I do believe that some people really do look at that uh, and also I believe that we need to have fairness in our tax code and I really am not sure that we do have that within this bill. Federal deductibility is one of the few things that most of the parties agree on but there are significant differences as Kay mentioned in, in the Senate tax plan, the governor's tax plan. The House has said they're going to work off the governor's tax plan. Senator Schneider, does that make the, the Senate Republican proposal uh, kind of DOA or uh, have, uh, have you promised something that's uh, never going to come to fruition? Uh, well, what we've done is we've introduced our idea for modernizing our tax code. We want to make sure that this opportunity to, to have real, true, comprehensive tax reform doesn't go to waste. We want to do more than just reform individual tax rates. We want to do more uh, than simply lower rates over a, a, a defined time period as the governor has proposed. We think we also need to attack corporate rates. We believe we need to modernize our sales tax uh, system right now, which the governor also agrees with. And we believe we ought to start phasing out some of these tax credits, which we'll no longer need if our rates are more competitive. Did, is it just the, with going after the corporate tax rates on, on top of it, which the governor didn't address, and the price tags are substantially different, did, did, did Senate Republicans maybe take too big a bite of the pie here uh, in something that I know Republicans have wanted to do for a long time? Again, what we're doing is we're just putting out an idea as to what comprehensive tax reform ought to look like. We want to make sure that we're able to take advantage of the one-time growth in, in state income tax revenues that we're going to see as a result of the federal <coughs> tax cut. We want to make sure that we're able to make our state an attractive place to invest, to grow, not only jobs, but people, as companies start to repatriate money from overseas back into the United States. Senator Dodson, what's your reaction to that? Well, you know, I, I think that it's really supposed to be about economic development and growing our state, and really this, this philosophy has been a failure in other states. In fact, the idea is about as fresh as an old gym sock in the bottom of a locker, in my view. And if you look at Forbes magazine, which I wouldn't call the most liberal magazine in, uh, in the world, they just recently had an article about a Kansas' great tax experiment that crashed and burned, and that's with the headlines. And in there, it really did talk about the only thing that they did see growth in was in some of the corporate uh, wage increases on the CEOs and within the company. And the real problem with Iowa, the plan that came out of the Iowa Senate is that you cannot capture that growth because now we're lowering tax rates on, on the highest income earners in Iowa and actually raising it on some of the lowest income earners in Iowa. 
Senator Schneider, we, we hear that a lot from opponents of these kind of plans. Worry about Kansas, what happened in Kansas. Is Iowa in danger of, of seeing what happened in Kansas with their budget troubles if this plan is enacted? No, absolutely not. Kansas provides some good examples of what not to do. And we want to avoid getting ourselves into the same situation Kansas did. Their failure, I think, was in not managing spending. They were too aggressive with the tax cuts without also being realistic about managing spending. Look at other states that have done a good job of lowering their tax rates and managing spending, like North Carolina, Indiana, Tennessee. States that aren't all that different from Iowa in some ways, they've done well because they've done a good job of managing both. And that's what we want to do too. So oh. you're the leader of the tax writing, I mean the uh, appropriations committee. You have a billion dollars worth of cuts ready for next year? We know that from our tax plan, we'll see an increase in, or that the, some of the components of our plan will help offset the loss in revenue. So for example, getting rid of federal deductibility will, uh, instead of, will mean that instead of uh, using that increase in state revenue for government spending, we're gonna use it to buy down rates. Our, our sales tax modernization plan will result in more sales tax revenue into the state. Our leveling of the playing field and spending less on tax credits and deductions and exemptions will mean that we're, we'll be uh, giving away less money to try and entice companies here. We won't need to do that because rates will be lower. So where's the scorecard there? Well, we have uh, Senator Feenstra, the Ways and Means Chair, has been working closely with the Department of Revenue to come up with an idea of uh, what kind of revenue impact the plan is going to have. We're waiting for a fiscal note to come back from LSA. I have some idea of uh, what we'll be able to do um, if we want to move forward with our uh, full plan and uh, we need to look outside of what's already in there. So what's the number? You don't know what the number well, is? Well, as you know from, from the plan that we released, uh, our plan calls for about a billion dollars right. in tax relief. Right. Now some of that money will be offset, as I said, with elimination of federal deductibility, with increased revenue from sales tax, and from having to pay out less for Excuse corporate me, Senator, giveaways. But that's not our question. What cuts? Yeah, you'll make up some, but a billion dollars worth? What are you going to cut? Well, that's part of what the conversation will have to be about, David. Uh, I'm not going to negotiate against myself as we try to work out a plan with the governor and with the House. Uh, Senator so, Dotzler, there are Iowans who say, government is bloated. Please cut government and give me a tax break. What do you say to those people? Well, <clears throat> I say that uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. We really are, are kind of coming apart at the seams when you look at uh, education funding, higher education, what that means to economic development. Yesterday in the Ways and Means Committee, and, and you might have not heard this yet from uh, Senator Veenstra, but he said that in uh, the next upcoming year, physical year 19, the hit to uh, our budget, the loss in revenue would be one third of that billion dollars. So we're talking about the budget that you're going to have to work on, uh, the 19 budget, more than $300 million worth of cuts. And even if there was some gain from this billion dollar uh, proposal, we would still have a time lag before that hit. And I really believe the number one issue facing our economy, and I spent 21 years in economic development, and I spent in them 21 years, I've listened to Iowa business community and to the person, they have always said this one thing, the number one issue holding back economic growth and businesses in Iowa isn't our tax structure, it is the lack of talent and intellectual capacity that's out there in the workforce issues. We, if we end up cutting education farther, especially the higher uh, learning part, like our universities, where actually serve as a recruitment tool to bring people into Iowa, because we have a tremendous person shortage besides a skill shortage, it would be one of the gravest mistakes we could do, well, and I think stick a, heart, a knife in the heart of economic growth. Well, right. speaking of economic growth, economic development, one of the other elements of this tax package that we wanted to talk about is the, the tax credits that you alluded to a little bit. Part of the justification for these, this massive uh, tax cut and the, and the lowering of the corporate tax rates is to make a more even playing field and not have to pick winners and losers, so to speak. But that is not entirely done away with. There are still some uh, programs in there, and 
including uh, the one that gets debated a lot, the research and, and uh, development tax credit. Uh, why are those still in there in, in a bill that also lowered these corporate tax rates so much? Why do we still need to pick winners and losers? Well, Senator Feenstra, I know, worked closely with uh, the director of the Department of Economic Development, Debbie Durham, to try and identify different programs that actually have a positive return on investment for taxpayers. Uh, this is one that uh, the Rockwell Collinses of, uh, of the state and the John Deere's uh, use and say they rely on. So it's some, we don't want to kill a bunch of jobs and, and cause companies to, to move out of state. Um, so that's why that particular tax credit is still in there. Um, but we're open to considering um, uh, another look at that as we move down the road and other tax credits as well. As I mentioned, this is part of a process. Well, Rockwell Collins just announced that they're moving the corporate offices to Florida and then only two of the six units of the of the new company will be based in Cedar Rapids. And it's interesting that Florida has no income tax and that's probably part of the reason why they're moving the executive office down there. We have unattractive income tax rates and we're not going to win that war for talent and attract people here or keep them here if we continue to penalize uh, uh, income and hard work and effort. So we need to reward that and that's what our plan does. But what about the research activities credit which you cited Rockwell Collins as one of the beneficiaries of well, if they're only going to keep two of the six units here? Well that's where they're doing a lot of the research already. The, uh, you saw a couple of folks from the solar industry. That was an example of people. And anytime you go through something like this, as you both know, you take away programs, there's going to be people who are concerned at the loss of that. Uh, volunteer firefighters and EMTs was another one, a tax credit for them. Um, how do you work through that? And, and how do you justify in particular on the, the solar one? It's a program that I believe only has a $5 million uh, cap uh, in a billion-dollar tax cut bill and, and in a bill that's keeping another or more uh, far more expensive programs, why was the solar one that was picked to, to be eliminated? What we're trying to really do is look at the big picture and make our state overall a better tax environment and tax climate, place, place a better place for companies to want to invest and grow their businesses, a place for people to want to live and, and stay. And if we start worrying about all the special interests and let them pick us apart on different uh, special benefits they get under the tax code, we'll never get anything done. And that's part of the reason I think why it's been so long since we have done anything on income tax. Senator Dossler, how do Senate Democrats want to tackle well, this? Well, uh, you know, the, the solar credit thing was a real mistake because really that helped. And, and if you listen to the testimony where I was at the public hearing, uh, they really talked about how they're helping agriculture in rural Iowa to reduce their, their costs in, in grain, cattle, and pork production in Iowa because solar really does help cut their costs with electricity. Senator Dawson, what do you, what do you say to people who look at these tax credits? We have, the pattern is this. You have a big story about the state giving a grant uh, to, or, or tax credits to some corporation, and then a few months later it seems like they leave. Uh, we've seen that pattern over and over again. You're a good Democrat, you come out of the labor movement, you've been involved in economic development. At what point do Iowa pol political leaders stand up to these companies and say, you know, don't let the door touch your fanny? Well, they do have called uh, clawback procedures, but I'm going to tell you, we've been way over aggressive with a lot of our uh, corporate giveaways. Uh, there are tax programs out there that have a tremendous return for investment. Another one that was cut was historic tax credits, which have an initial 5 to 1 return on your dollar and 30 to 1 when they mature. Senator Schneider, what about that? Why don't you, what does, do, 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 do no political leaders in Iowa have the fortitude to tell corporations who want these things to heck with you? Well, that's what we're doing in our bill. I mean, we're lowering rates, we're sunsetting a lot of the corporate tax giveaways and deductions and exemptions, and we're, we're not letting the special interests pick us apart on this. Uh, we're looking forward to having a dialogue with the House and with the governor's office to come up with a, an overall plan. They may not agree with everything that's in ours, and they probably won't agree with, anything, with everything that's in ours. But it's a part of the conversation, and at some point we do need to stand up to the special interests, and that's what we're trying to do in our plan. You know, one, one idea that uh, you could do would be to, you've got about 42 of these credits, I understand. Let's have 42 amendments to your bill, each tax credit, yes or no, how the legislature feels about this. How about that? I like our bill the way it is. <laughs> uh, I don't. 
<laughs> There's also a discussion at the State House that is yet unresolved to cut the current year's budget. Why isn't it resolved, Senator? Well, again, we have differences of opinion on how to best go about that. Uh, we sent over what we believe to be a, a fiscally responsible plan to the House, and they've amended it. I don't know uh, when they're planning to call it up to the floor for a vote, uh, but we'll wait for that and continue to work with them to come to some kind of resolution. Are you waiting for this three-member group that makes an estimate of state tax revenues to meet on March 9th and tell you all that they have um, redone the estimate and you don't have to make any cuts? Well, we're waiting on the House. I don't know what they're waiting on. Uh, you'd have to ask Representative Grassley. Um, in regards to this deappropriation, isn't it wise to wait to see what the true picture is on March 9th? Well, March 9th certainly coming, and I think we ought to wait on this billion-dollar tax bill till we understand, because one of the Democrats' position is to make sure that we know what our budget is and it's going to be balanced. Uh, I, I believe that we ought to get this resolved uh, with the... Uh, clawbacks for 18 year as soon as possible because the longer we wait the more difficult it's going to be for state government to make up those cuts and uh, really we haven't also settled the state aid problem so i'm surprised that senate republicans haven't been working on the issues that we need to resolve immediately instead of spending their time on a monster bill that is a mystery to most iowans senator schneider how do you react to that well, we have taken our time to focus on the priorities, and you know, we only have 41 days left in the legislative session as of today. And as, Rep as Senator Dotzler said, it is going to take time to work through the bill and to talk to the House and the governor's office and come up with uh, uh, some kind of reconciliation bill. And we want to make sure that we have enough time to do that. If we wait any longer to send something over, we may run out of time. Isn't there a danger of unintended consequences, Senator Schneider? I mean, you've got the federal government passing a huge bill. Who knows what's in it? You've got a big bill, 130 pages. Um, is there a danger here that you'll make some mistake, do something wrong? Maybe you ought to take a, a slower approach to get this right, at least to find out what the effect of the federal tax cut is. Well, sending something over to the House now gives us the time we need to find some kind of solution within this legislative session. We can't just wait. You'll also have to get to next year's budget during this session, um, knowing, uh, we don't know what the revenue will be until the March 9 estimate, but knowing that there will be likely some revenue taken out for the tax cut bill, um, how is public education gonna fare in next year's budget? Will we be able to fund K-12 schools and, and the region's universities? We've already agreed with the House to increase spending for K-12 by about $50 million next year. And I want to be clear, our priority is to make sure that we're adequately funding education, Medicaid, public safety, critical state services. And if there are some portions of our bill that need to change in order to make sure that we're adequately funding those, uh, that's going to be clear as we negotiate Senator, with the House and with the governor's right, office. Senator, that's you that really sounds background. good, but the reality is that's not what's happening. And this is a big risk. It's kind of like a gambler putting all their money on a roulette wheel and hoping that that one number is going to come up right. By the way, the odds are 37 to 1 in that case. Senators, you both were involved in development of the state's medical marijuana program. Are you comfortable, Senator Snyder, with just having one manufacturer? And do you think that uh, a board should make the decision about THC levels and which conditions should be covered? Now, I think the fact that there's only one company that's applied to produce medical cannabis in the state is an indication that the bill we passed out of the Senate with, a, I think it was a 45 to 5 vote, was probably the right way to go, to give companies flexibility to have, a, to have enough market share to be profitable in, in what they're producing to help sick islands. What about giving another board uh, autonomy to make the decisions about which conditions are covered? Yeah, I, I think that's what we put in our Senate bill last year, um, and I think we ought to leave it in the hands of experts. Gentlemen, we've got just a minute left. I want to switch the topic to guns. Uh, in, in the wake of what happened in Florida, do either of you see any legislation coming uh, out, of, out of this session of the legislature to deal with gun issues? Senator Donson. 
Well, I, tell you the truth, I don't, I don't see much. The good news is that we're stopping some of it, and some cooler heads have prevailed, especially on a constitutional carry that said that you didn't even have to get a permit. Everybody could. And we know what happens with people with mental health problems. And I got to tell you, the number one thing that could hurt with this budget that's planned is what we're doing for mental health in Iowa. We need to invest. In those. Senator Snyder, 30 seconds. What, do, you, do you see any legislation emerging? I see us focusing on mental health. In fact, there's a mental health bill that's working through both chambers right now that adds uh, critical access centers, six critical access centers throughout the state and uh, includes some other things too. We just passed a bill uh, with, I believe, a unanimous vote the other day that requires uh, suicide training uh, for teachers in, in our schools. We'll continue to find ways to make sure that our, our school children are safe. Gentlemen, I'm out of time. Thank you we very need much more. for. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both for being with us. Thank you. thank you. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back with another edition of Iowa Press next week at our regular times, but on our Dot 3 World channel instead. Our main IPTV channel will bring you live coverage of the Girls State High School Basketball Championships. But you can catch Iowa Press Friday night at 7.30. Saturday morning at 8.30 and Sunday morning at noon on our World channel or online at IPTV.org. So for all of us here at Iowa Public Television, I'm David Yepsen and thanks for joining us today. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, the Associated General Contractors of Iowa, the public's partner in building Iowa's highway, bridge, and municipal utility infrastructure. I'm a dad. I am a mom. I'm a kid. I'm a kid at heart. I'm a banker. I'm an Iowa banker. No matter who you are, there is an Iowa banker who is ready to help you get where you want to go. Iowa bankers, allowing you to discover the genuine difference of Iowa banks.